Chef, every belly last three rounds. Yeah. MAA dog, check the end down. Worldwide. Philly the Philippines. Fighters tapping out for yeah. teams. Losing is a nightmare. Winning is a damn dream. Damn, G. You gon' push your paw in. You should think about tapping on that arm. Gon' break. Snap. Make money in the flash. Got three days off. Time to get that cash. We can send two. Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and this is my dog, Dan. Hi, guys. And as always, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. Now, this is our exclusive betting picks video that we're um, sending out to our clients, to our customers first. So they get to see it first, only, exclusive. And, uh, and we're going to be covering UFC Fight Night 28. We got Glover Teixeira versus Ryan Bader. And uh, this is going to be a fight card dog at first when I first saw it announced and saw the fights um, on paper, I wasn't, it didn't really jump at, jump out at me. I didn't really, you know, get excited, you know, to run around my house. Yeah, woo, I can't wait for this fight card to happen. But as I started doing the research and I started watching some of these guys' fights, we uh, are really in store for some exciting fights. We are. I feel that uh, Joe Silva and uh, Sean Shelby, they did a good job at putting these guys together, matching them up. And uh, we should have some competitive fights. Uh, we do have some uh, a good amount of Brazilian versus Brazilian fighters, which uh, which I think uh, make for really good fights. I'll go, I'll dive into that in a little while and talk about that. But uh, you know what? Let's just dive straight into it. Let's just go right into the fun stuff. Now, let's start it all off here with a five star pick. Well, deservingly, this guy is incredible. He might be the new uh, flyweight champion of the world once he gets his, his, uh, his shot again. And that is Joseph Benavidez. Now, with Joseph Benavidez, he currently sits around minus 500, which, you know, at first glance looks like, my God, minus 500. But let's talk about why he is a five-star pick for us. And uh, first things first, so Joseph Benavidez, um, he's been five rounds, so he knows what it's like to take it to the championship rounds. He trains at Alpha Male, so he trains with Faber, he trains with Mendez, he trains with Dillashaw, he trains with a bunch of good guys, Danny Castillo, just a bunch of Lance Palmer, so many guys. And now that they have uh, Dwayne Bang Ludwig as their head coach, MMA coach, they have structure, they have uh, a plan, a routine set as opposed to it's wild to think, it's really crazy to think that before they weren't as structured in following a regimen, a routine. And now that they are, honestly, Benavidez, man, he could be minus 1,000 and I would still bet him. And uh, with him being five stars, he is a large, a huge play. Definite parlay worthy. Now, let me tell you guys something before, before I go too far. You definitely don't want to put him in every single one of your parlays. You do not want to do that Never. because it, it, it's still MMA, you know, anything can happen, small gloves, blah, 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 blah. But you don't want to put them every single parlay. Now, I don't blame you if you put them in like three big juicy parlays or four, but don't want to put them in every single one. Um, you know, he's a good anchor, but at the same time, you have to be careful. Like I said, you don't want to ruin, you don't want one, one night, one fight to ruin your whole night. That's what I'm trying to say there. So, um, so like I said, Benavidez, great wrestling. Great wrestling. He's got submissions, good knockout power. I expect his knockouts, uh, his, his technical striking and everything to improve. Uh, now he's working with uh, Ludwig. And he, like I said, he's got his great workout uh, training partners. And with uh, Juicy and Formiga, now with this guy, you know, a lot of hype, a lot of this around him, but I can't, I can't ignore, I just can't ignore Doug, what I saw out of his fight with Carriasso and, uh, and his gas tank, you know, for a, for a 125 pounder. His casting just does not impress me at all. And uh, at worst, at worst, I see Joseph Benavidez finishing the fight in the third round. Like I said, he's been five rounds before. He can knock you out. He can submit you. He'll wear you out. He'll wrestle you. I mean, Benavidez has it all. Formiga, okay, he's got submissions, but what else does he have? You know, he's got a submission game. Nothing else uh, from him impresses me. Um, and uh, like I said, at worst, third round stoppage by Joseph Benavidez. And we'll get into that a little bit later as well. But uh, but I favor him to, to get a knockout here. I definitely see him get finishing the fight. 
So that wraps it up for the five stars. Let's go straight to the four stars. Now, four star plays are medium to large, and they are also parlay worthy. So the second guy of the night here is Ivan George, or Ivan Jorge, however you want to pronounce it. Now, with Ivan George, he's never fought in the UFC. Um, so, of course, I did my research on him. Uh, there's plenty of fights out there on YouTube. Uh, he fought Jungle Fights and uh, Jungle Fight Champion. Um, and watching him fight, I was really impressed. Really impressed. Uh, submission, submission artist, first round. I mean, this guy goes, goes out for it and gets it. He's just focused, boom, goes out there, does what he needs to do, wins the fight. And with Keith, with Niski, with Niski, this guy, um, first of all, he's not a full-time fighter. He's got a full-time job. He works for the union, um, iron, doing iron uh, union work. And um, he's been out for 18 months with an injury. Now, something I want to share with you guys, there's a lot of information I want to share, but one of the things that really stands out, I mean, this is unbelievable. The last 26 fights that have taken place in Brazil, where we have had a Brazilian versus a non-Brazilian, the score is 22 to 4. Brazilians. Brazilians. <laughs> and wow, that just jumps out at me. Now, like I said, with Keith being out, injured, he's got a full-time job. And I was listening to an interview he was doing, and he sounded okay with losing this fight. If I lose this fight, I won't retire. I'll continue fighting. You know, I, I wanted to fight. This is Keith speaking. I wanted to fight in November, October, but, you know, Joe Silva emailed my manager, and uh, he offered me this fight in September. It almost sounded to me like he said, hey, take this fight, or, or that's it. Sorry, we got to let you go. We got a whole lot of, whole lot of bunch of other guys who we need, we need to uh, fight and see what they're about. And uh, he took this fight on short notice after the injury. He said he didn't feel completely ready. Plus, he's going down to Brazil. I mean, this is just, a, and he's fighting Ivan George. I mean, this is just a, you know, just a fight where, to me, it's very clear. Uh, George sitting at around minus one, minus two twenty. Um, I really like this one a lot. Like I said, parlay straight my, minus two twenty. I don't see any reason why not playing it straight as well with a, you know, two leg parlay. And in, in Brazil, you can get away with, um, you can get away with parlays that perhaps you shouldn't do outside of Brazil. Uh, the other country I can think of is Canada. Canada and Brazil, you can get away with parlays where you wouldn't necessarily want to do in other countries, but you can in Brazil. So I really like Ivan George in this fight by submission. I would say first round, second round submission, um, finishing that fight for sure. And the third play, another guy. Uh, this guy, he... Always finds a way to win. This guy, I remember, I've, we've, I've seen him fight uh, at least twice in person, live. And uh, every time, this guy just has a big heart, just goes out there, does what he needs to do. Um, and he's always improving. He's always showing me something better and better and better. And, um, and I think this guy's going to be, he's already hit his stride, but I think he's going to be coming up um, on to better opposition. And that is Rafael Natal, Sapo Natal. And uh, he's sitting around minus 250. Um, with Natal, I see a clear path to victory for him here in this fight. I see him taking down Tor and getting the submission. But uh, Natal also likes to trade on the feet. So uh, this fight is very close to his home. And uh, he's got a whole lot of family and friends there watching him fight. And with Tor, you know, he, he was on Ultimate Fighter House, lost to Salmon, got knocked out by Salmon. And I know he's trying to improve. He's in San Diego here, and he's, uh, you know, with Gustafsson and all that good stuff. But, you know, they're putting him up against a guy who just, like I said, finds a way to win. He can get, Natal can get hit. You know, I'm not saying he's a, a world beater. He's not, you know, the champion. But he's going up against a guy in Tor who, um, like I said, he's, he's just not at, he's not at the UFC level yet. And they're putting him up against a guy like this. And I was telling my dog, you know, it's almost like, they want to get it into um, Gustafsson's head. Like, hey, you're going to lose. You know, they're putting up Gustafsson, a Swedish guy, against uh, John Jones. And uh, it's a big uphill battle. John Jones is a big cash cow for the UFC. And um, 
And Rafael Matal, like I said, he's just on the cusp there of going up against better 185 pounders. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I really see um, the, an opportunity here for him to get a finish in the first round. Um, and Tor, he's been finished before. Uh, Taylor's late has finished him with, uh, with his jiu-jitsu. Rafael Matal, you know, up there with Hendo Gracie and all those good guys. I really see him finishing this fight uh, by submission. Moving along here, three-star pick, small to medium play. So it's a do not parlay. Like I said, in Brazil, you can get away with it. Um, but, you know, it's totally up to you. And uh, me personally, if you're wondering, I will be parlaying him. Um, but like I said, it's a three-star pick, and I would rather be safe than sorry. But because it is in Brazil, you know, I feel like, uh, like I said, we can get away with it a little bit more. Now, he's nowhere in the category of, like, let's say Benavides or George. That's why I put him at three stars. But the fourth pick is going to be Francisco Trinaldo, sitting around minus 305. Now, with him, one fight that really stood out to me, his other opponents didn't really impress me, but one fight that really stood out to me was when he fought, um, when he fought uh, Gleason Tebow. As my dog and I were talking about during this week and also today, that uh, near submission that he had, dog, on uh, Tebow. Yeah. Very, very impressive. You guys know Tebow, uh, he just recently fought uh, Varner and... Uh, <laughs> And this guy, he's just overpowering, huge guy, wrestling. And for Trinaldo to even put Tebow in a position like that is impressive. Not only that, but Trinaldo can knock you out. He can submit you. Now, this Piotr Hallman guy, uh, at first glance on paper, you know, you look at his you look at his record, oh shit, you know, who is this guy coming to the UFC? Maybe he's somebody. I, I looked up his fights and oh my goodness. I mean, uh, no disrespect to this guy, but man, he is just not on the level that a guy going into Brazil to beat a Brazilian who has skills, who's been proven in the UFC, has to win a fight. So uh, at minus 305, I have no problem betting him straight. And uh, and I see, uh, once again, I see uh, Trinaldo having the ability to finish him in the first or second round via knockout or submission, whatever he prefers, whatever he sees opportunity. But I'm um, just not impressed at all with what I've seen with Piotr Holman. So uh, Trinaldo's a play there. And then the uh, last betting pick, the last one that we guarantee uh, we will get more right than wrong, is uh, Joseph Benavidez inside the distance prop bet. That's going to be your, a, uh, a bet that's around, around minus 150, but if it goes to around minus 200, that's fine too. Um, and with Joseph, like I said, at worst, at worst, I see Joseph Benavidez getting the stoppage in the third round. And Formiga will be very gassed by then. He'll be on his way out if he doesn't get it in the first or second. We saw Chad Mendez finish Clay Guida. Clay Guida had never been knocked out before. TKO knockout in third round. Look what he did. Boom. And uh, it's going to be with these guys, the grind of being a wrestler. They can go five rounds, these guys can. So um, I easily see Benavidez here. And, of course, you know, we never want to get too carried away. You know, there's always a possibility that, that we can lose. So you don't want to blow your, your, your whole, you know, uh, God your forbid, bankroll. you're a beginner and you blow your whole bank. You don't want to exactly. let it ride over Exactly, over. exactly. So you want to, exactly. So you want to be, yeah, exactly. So, um, but with these five picks, I feel really confident in all of them. Um, all these guys should win. They have a clear path to victory. And uh, everything is st stacked in their favor. And everything is stacked against uh, their opponents. So... Those are the five picks. Uh, of course, we will send you out a text file so that way you can reference it and take a look at it and see. And then, of course, we'll break down the rest of the card. We'll talk about why they almost made the cut. Perhaps we'll give you enough information to where you feel like, hey, I'm gonna bump this guy up to my own personal three-star level or whatever star you want, you know, however many, uh, how you feel. Or you can say, hey, you know what? I was on the cusp of this guy, but now that I see a little more, see the picture a little bit more clearly, um, I, I do not want to, I don't want to bet it. So this is where we stand with these fights. We do not want to bet. Um, we'll go over why, we'll go over what we see, and we'll, of course we'll give you guys our opinion on who we think will win. Um, but it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed, exactly. So let's go straight to it, dog. Let's go to the main event. A lot of people want to see this fight. A lot of people are wondering what's going to happen. And for me, we got Ryan Bader versus Glover Teixeira. Now at first glance, when you first think about this fight, Teixeira. That's what I think. I think Teixeira's gonna win this fight. It's in Brazil. And uh, Bader's shown some suspectability here, some, some weaknesses, and uh, Teixeira's has been a beast. But before we ride off Ryan Bader, I wanna kick it over to my dog here. And dog, what are the odds currently sitting around for Ryan Bader and Glover Teixeira? 
Uh, right now, Glover Tejera is currently sitting around minus 420, and Ryan Bader is sitting at plus 375. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so okay, so with Bader, what do we know? Bader, we have a powerful wrestler, um, you know, all-American ASU wrestler. But one fight that I just can't get out of my mind yeah, just, I don't think anybody can who talks about Bader is <laughs> the fight he had against Tito Ortiz. Now, granted, Tito Ortiz went in there focused, knowing that his job was on the line. Back up against the wall. Back up against the wall. And he goes out there, clips him, and then Bader, you know, whoa, falls to the ground. Tito submits him. So his chin isn't the best. Bader's chin is not the best. And, uh, also against Machida. Now with Machida, I don't blame him so much. Hey, you know what? It's Machida. Was against John Jones? Hey, you know what? In my opinion, I've said it before. It was too much too soon. But mm-hmm. against Tito, hey, you know what? That's man, that was a big disappointment. Big old foobar of a of a of a of a, uh, of a pick there. And uh, and I can't ignore that. I just can't not ignore that. And like I said, he is going down to Brazil. If this fight was in the United States, hey, you know what? I may feel a little frisky for Ryan Bader, especially at those ridiculous odds that my dog gave. Now, as you guys know, I'm not a big odds guy, value guy. My dog knows it. A lot of you guys also know it. A lot of guys who email me or we talk or whatever, they, they know. I'm not real big on value and odds, but at this, with Glover takes share at minus 420, that's, that's, just, that's just way too high, way too high. Even if he does win, that's a lot of money to lay uh, on a guy. And the biggest question I have with Glover is, who is the best fighter he has faced in the UFC? James Tahuna? Rampage? Jackson? Like, I just think about that and we saw what Maldonado, we saw a fight with Maldonado. Now, Maldonado, granted, could take a beating. This guy is just like a trash can, you know? He's just... <laughs> but even he was able to hurt, uh, even he was able to hurt Teixeira. And um, and I know Teixeira, you know, uh, Hackleman and, and now with the um, ATT top team and Pedro Hizo and, and Chuck Liddell. He's got a great history, great everything. But and he, we know he can submit guys. He can knock guys out. But like I said before, this is MMA. Anything can happen. And Bader, he's going in there with nothing to lose. He, you know, he knows if he loses his fight, he's not going to get cut. So he's going in there relaxed. He want, of course he wants to win. But this fight is five rounds, and if I gotta favor a guy for five rounds, I gotta favor Bader. If Tejera can't finish it, and I would say the first two, maybe three, depends on how in shape. Tejera, in my opinion, he was in, in shape a little bit better shape for this fight than I've seen him before. So I think he's he know it's five rounds. I gotta be prepared. But I gotta favor uh, Bader in here. I feel like Bader's um, getting into his own, hitting his own stride here. What he did to Madshenko's last fight, I just feel like he's becoming more and more comfortable. Um, he's got a, a, a once again like a Benavides. He's got a head coach in MMA, um, somebody who's guiding them, showing them a way. And that you would think like, hey, that's like elementary. That's like that's one of the first thing you do is get a coach. But somebody who really runs your trainings, make sure you don't overtrain, and and it's just it's a big step for a lot of these wrestlers to 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 stay, scale back. So I favor there with the cardio, but I can't just, I can't ignore t- uh, Bader's chin. I just can't ignore it. I can't ignore him getting submitted, so I I am going to go with Glover Teixeira um, by finish in the first or second round, and of course I'll send you guys the, the my dog will send you guys the file, and um, we'll show you the exact method and exact um, round, so you guys can see that. But I, I gotta go with Teixeira here, um, but I don't want to bet it at minus four twenty. And like I said before, I predict uh, not just based off the odds, but just based off who I believe will win. But, uh, but there's just too many things here that where I take a look at Glover's opponents and I don't feel comfortable with the minus 420. Um, so that's my take on it. Dog, what do you got for us? Yeah, Hector. Man, this fight uh, was actually supposed to happen uh, back at UFC 160. And to be honest, uh, if it actually took place then um, before Glover fought James DeHuna, who replaced Ryan Bader, mm-hmm. um, I think it would have been harder to call. But I feel like... Um, James DeHuna is uh, is a step up from um, you know Quentin Jackson, um, Maldonado, Kingsbury, um, Matashenko, and Brills, obviously. Um, and you got to look at these guys. Um, 
their their most recent fights, and obviously their most common opponent uh, right now is Rampage mm-hmm. Jackson. Rampage fought John Jones for the belt, yep. and uh, and and these guys just cleaned him up, and he says he just moved on, but I'm sure the <laughs> UFC was going to cut him anyway. So yeah, um, so yeah, but you know, looking at these fights, you know. We really thought that um, Tejera would would look a lot more dominant if he wasn't gonna beat if he wasn't gonna finish Rampage. He would mm-hmm. look way more dominant than he did. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, Bader beat Rampage, but Rampage was injured, and Rampage still managed to drop him on his head. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, other than that, what has Bader done? Okay, he beat Brills and Matashenko. Everybody else that he fought, he either he either lost or he looked vulnerable in. And, uh, you know, it's not to say that you're not supposed to look vulnerable in a fight. It's fighting, you know. As Demetrius Johnson likes to say, you know, you don't go to the swimming pool without expecting to get splashed. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I just, I just feel like, um, you know, Glover's on a 19-fight on a win streak right now. Um, and um, he's definitely, um, I think he's uh, over-favorited in this fight. I'm not saying that he shouldn't be the favorite, but mm-hmm. maybe not such a high favorite. And I yep. think the reason behind that is the location, mm-hmm. um, also the win streak. But um, but yeah, I'm gonna go with um, Glover Tejera in this one. Um, also, first or second round stoppage. I haven't decided on a method, but I I really don't see this fight even going into the later rounds, much less a decision. Yeah, good Keep point. Keep in mind it's a five round fight. Mm-hmm. Five round fight and. Uh, um, you know, I might even be checking out the prop on that one. Um, yeah, yeah, good points, Doc. Great do points. Do not bet. Yeah, good, good points, Doc. Excellent points. I really like the fact that you brought up Rampage Jackson and the, yeah. the, the equal, the uh, common opponent, and the fact that Rampage was able to slam Bader on his head while he was injured. Um, now, uh, something I want to share with you guys. I almost forgot this. Um, well, two things. First thing I'll say is uh, the prop bet, Doc. That's a good point. One prop bet that I'll be looking at. Uh, depending on how the now the the benefit we get in this particular fight is that it is uh it is the main event so we get to see it at the very end of the at the very end of uh by then we'll have cashed out and and we'll see where we're at so we'll have the luxury of saying hey you know what this looks like a good um prop bet yeah uh because i do like i do like it obviously i can't guarantee it and i can't guarantee that i'm even gonna bet it but i do like glover inside the distance because um you know, like I said, what I, like I've said before, submission. yeah, knock out a submission. Now we'll share with you guys exactly. So that's that is a, a def uh, that is a uh, something definitely to look out for, uh, especially considering how the, the night may have gone already. So um, one thing I'll share with you guys real quick is uh, I met uh, Glover Tejera in uh, in Orange County in OC at a uh, at a regional show. And uh, we had a good conversation. This guy, uh, nobody knew who he was. This was before 153, I think. Mm-hmm. After 153, everybody, he said when he yeah. came back to the States, yeah. everybody started knowing who he was. Yeah. But before that, yeah, just no, hanging out. Just yeah, hanging just out. hanging out. Nobody knew who he was. I couldn't believe it. And this guy's a giant guy, you know, of course. And I couldn't believe nobody knew who he was. So I, you know, I went up to him and, and introduced myself. And we started talking. And uh, there, was a, there was a fight. There was a fight taking place. And... Um, and we were talking, and we, we must have talked for like uh, a good half hour. It was at least for like a good half hour. And uh, we were just talking about MMA, talking about different things. And um, this is before, definitely before he fought Rampage. I think it was around the time the fight got announced. It, was, uh, it was after we saw him uh, smother Kyle Kingsbury. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. It was that was after it. that, but before everything We were else. talking about MMA, and he's a smart guy, you know. And, and um, you know, I was, I was impressed, uh, you know, because, of course, we were talking about game plans and when to strike wrestling all that good stuff and and uh, I really like the guy and I uh, really think that all the experience he's gone through all the fights he's been through the, the fact that he couldn't um, you know get the visa and all the stuff he needed to get to fight in the UFC I feel like it really built up a hunger in him and I, I feel confident picking him um, especially like you know my dog's in Brazil so so let's not beat that one up too much. We both we're both going with with uh, Tejera in this one. Early stoppage. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, let's move along to another really interesting fight. I really like this matchup, and that is uh, Yushin Okami taking on Ronaldo Souza, Jacare Souza. Dog, what are the odds on on this particular fight? What are they sitting at around right now? Right now, Jacare Souza is sitting around minus two forty five, mm-hmm. and Yushin Okami is sitting at plus two twenty five. Mm-hmm. There we go. So, okay, okay, Okami, big time wrestler. We know what he can do with his grappling. He's never been submitted. 
every time I watch this guy fight, it seems like he has his way. The only fight I can think of where he doesn't have his way is when he fought uh, Anderson Silva. But of course, you know, it's Anderson Silva. But every other time I see watch this guy fight, he's just smothering guys, smothering guys, having his way, doing what he wants to do. Now, what does concern me about him is his chin. Lately, in his recent fights, I feel like his chin has been getting worse and worse. And then his cardio in the third round. Um, I feel like that's a, a, a spot that's not a strength. He's such a big guy, cutting so much weight. You know, third round can look a little shaky. And with uh, Jacare Souza, my biggest beef with him is his, his level of opposition. The guys he has fought. And, you know, I don't blame him for uh, my dog and I were talking about earlier. Like, some of the guys he's fought where it looks like, what? Like, why isn't Jacare finishing in the first round? And I was telling my dog, it's like, I have a feeling that for a lot of these fights, he probably didn't train 100% focused because he knew he was going up against a B-level guy or a C-level guy. So it's like, hey, I could, I could train 75% of my attention on it and, and do what I need to do to win. So I don't blame him for that, but I think for this particular fight, he is going to be 100% focused. Now, I said if, and whenever there's an if, you got to be real cautious and real careful, especially at that price tag my dog just said. Man, that is that is a scary price tag. Now, Souza is a world grappler, submission expert. You know, they call him the the uh, the, the crocodile alligator. Uh, same same difference to me. And uh, for this fight, I, I feel he will have the motivation. He trains with a bunch of great guys at X Gym, uh, a lot of good trainers, um, so good training partners. But with Okami, I know he's been training down here at Alliance in San Diego, and um, and I know he's always always evolving, always trying to improve. And what he can and um, and I can never count that guy out even in Brazil you know I would I really be shocked if Okami wins a decision if I take a look at the guys who have won in Brazil remember the the statistic I gave you guys about uh, 22 and 4 it was McCall a wrestler Lentz a wrestler Davis a wrestler and the fluke that we had you know stupid Paroche. Uh so wrestler 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 and Okami is a wrestler now that puts us in an interesting situation because Jacare is a submission guy so uh, you know, he can work from the bottom if he gets wrestled. He can work toward, if he gets um, put up against a cage, he can work towards getting a trip or getting a takedown of his own. So there are some th uh, things he has, like I said, in the third round. Uh, Jacare has fought five rounds against Luke Rockhold. So, um, you know, he does have that advantage. But um, but that's a big price tag to, to, to pay, and especially against a big wrestler like Okami. Um, who's I, never been submitted. Who's never been submitted. Yeah, exactly. So uh, with that all being said, I'm going to go with Jacare Souza by submission in the third round, but like I said, it's not a it's not a fight that I'm jumping up and down to go bet, and uh, it's not a fight that I even uh, consider for a prop or anything like that. I'm not. Of course, if he wins, I think it will be by submission, but you never know. You know, it could be a uh, it could be a knockout in the third round. Um, so if if you do want to bet it, you may be inside the distance, but uh, I'm not interested in it. But I am going to go with Jacare Souza. Dan, what do you got? Yeah, dog. This fight uh, was really, really tough to decide on, and you know, whenever there's a a, a, a fight in mind where you're thinking, who do I want to bet on? Who do I want to bet on? And you keep going back and forth. Probably best to just not bet it on at all. I mm -hmm. just feel like um, both these guys could win the fight. Um, you know, Okami, he's proved me wrong time and time again. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, his last five fights, I'm gonna go back as far as the Anderson Silva fight last time he was uh, fighting in Brazil. And, um, you know, he, he stunk on the feet. Uh, mm. Now, the Tim, the Tim Boach fight, he was dominating that fight, but again, he stunk on the feet. And ten eights, out. ten, ten eights, ten eights, yeah. and then all of a sudden. Yeah, he got backed up in a corner. and then Third round. And then after the, the Tim Boach fight, he fights uh, rising uh, newcomer Buddy Roberts, and I'm watching this guy, this plus yeah, Well, he was, my, he was a pretty big, huge favorite in them, but I'm watching Buddy Robert, Roberts sit there, <laughs> And just pick Okami apart on the feet the whole first round. Now, Okami came back off the TKO in the second round because Buddy Roberts had, once he got taken down, he had no defense at all. Nothing. He just he just kind of like let Okami hit him in the head. In the head. It wasn't it wasn't even uh, that great of a stoppage. It was just the fact that Roberts wasn't even doing anything. Mm -hmm. It was kind of, I'm just going to let him hit me until they stop the fight, but I'm not like in trouble really. And um, then the Alan Belcher fight. And I was we were really high on Alan Belcher in that fight. Yeah. And, uh, and Okami proved us wrong. Yep. And finally, 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 I learned my lesson. I remember we did a video for uh, for his fight with Hector Lombard, and we both had Hector Lombard winning. And uh, that was a that was a screwy card. And I remember changing a couple picks last minute. And one of them, I switched my pick to Okami. Okami wins. 
And I remember I switched my, my pick to Vanderlei Silva. Vanderlei Silva defeated Brian Stan. But, um, but this one, I'm kind of thinking like, uh, you know, Ronaldo can knock him out on the feet. Mm-hmm. He can submit him or he can win a decision. But then I look at, at Jock Ray's, um, you know, record and previous opponents. And uh, I just, yeah, like, like you said, Doc, he just kind of, oh, if it's, a, if it's a big name, I'll actually try. And if it's not, then, you know, I'll give whoever a chance to, to actually win as opposed to doing or, or uh, fighting how I'm supposed to and showing how dominant I really am. And uh, you know, going to the Luke Rockhold fight, if if the if the if the Jock Ray that shows up uh, um, tomorrow night uh, to fight Okami, if that Jock if that's the Jock Ray who fought Luke Rockhold, he's gonna lose. Um, Bristol Marunde, another one. Like like, how how did you let this guy get to the third round? And then all of a sudden, you know, you knock out Derek Brunson in less than a minute. You submit Ed Herman, which in my opinion was his most uh, impressive recent fight. And uh, you know Chris Camozzi too. That was a, that was also an impressive fight because you know a lot of people don't realize um, that Chris Camozzi was gonna was 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 on his way going somewhere before that fight, and um, mm-hmm. and Jock Ray put a stop to it. And you know that fight was in Brazil too. But um, but yeah, I just feel like both these both these guys could uh, could disappoint. Um, but after analyzing everything, in my opinion, even though it's a no mm-hmm. bet. I just have to go with uh, I have to go with Yushin Okami by decision, um, you know, just because uh, there's no telling what what Jock Ray is going to show up show up. I think he'll show up to fight, but with Okami never being submitted, um, could I see Okami um, you know wrestle him for two rounds? I don't think it'll be a 30-27 decision or anything, but I could see easily a unanimous 29-28 for Okami and uh, and Suza is going to be back to square one. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah. That, so my dog and I are split on this one. I'm taking Susa. My dog's taking Okami, and um, and that this goes to show you, you know how how uh, with a wrestler you can never count the wrestler out. Now I think uh, we may look back on this fight, and it may be that Suza goes out there and finishes Okami in the first round, and we're all kind of like ah. But that just goes to show you the power of uh, focus, being focused and motivated. And really having a strategy and a game plan and getting up for certain things in life, whether it's a fight or your job or whatever it is that you're doing. And I feel like Souza falls into that category. Um, and he's not a young guy, you know, he's, a, he's up there in age, perhaps in um, physically and also uh, in his fight career. He doesn't have too much mileage on him, but, uh, but still, uh, um, you got to be real careful. And uh, so, yeah, so that, that covers, up, that covers the, the main two fights. Um, and then uh, for this one, I'm going to kick it over to my dog because we basically feel the exact same way about it. And it's a flyweight fight between um, a Russian newcomer, Ali Balkanitanov, back in that time. <laughs> it's a tough one to say. Yeah. Versus Marcus Vinicius. So, uh, so dog, what do we have in this one? Yeah, dog. Uh, this fight, I am really high on this new Russian guy. <laughs> um, you know, the odds uh, are probably about right. Um, I think this guy's going to go out there and, and finish the fight really early in the first minute or two. Um, but there's a reason we're not making this one a betting pick. And, um, you know, one of the main reasons is this guy's never fought outside of Russia. We have no idea what kind of... Um, how he's gonna uh, handle how the he's travel. gonna handle the, the travel mm-hmm. and, and everything. He looked fine at the weigh-ins, but mm-hmm. but um, you know, there's just there and and uh, this guy Marcos, you know, he's a Brazilian in Brazil, mm-hmm. and uh, you know that that's an automatic advantage, no matter no matter who you're fighting, um, and so and, and plus, I mean, not to say that not to say that um, we think um, uh, Benavides. Uh, is is uh is gonna uh, not Benavides? Not that we think that Formiga or anything um, really stands a chance. Everybody stands a chance, but um, I feel like um, I don't know really where I'm where I'm going with this, but I feel like um, I just feel like uh, it's it's really hard to explain. I'm just gonna stop talking about that and um, but I just feel like um, ah. Well, let, let me tell you what I think yeah, you're going to say. Yeah. I, so I think anytime you know there's a anytime there's a there's a favorite, especially when it's a, a oh I know I was going to say the, the the we're already picking against one guy you know one guy that's that's not from Brazil mm-hmm. in Brazil, um you know we don't want to get carried away and start picking against all these guys uh, that are that are from Brazil fighting in Brazil even if mm-hmm. we don't think they're going to win. That's yeah, what I was a, trying to it's say. It's an interesting situation because you take a guy who has a great record. Who is a favorite, and he's fighting in Brazil, 
And um, in, in the case of, for example, Joseph Benavides, where we, we have clear paths to victory, we have right. a proven track record, we have so many, so much evidence in his favor. And then you take a guy like Ali, where he's never fought outside of Russia, like my dog said, and, um, and he's minus 300 or whatever, he's sitting around minus 300 right now. And, um, and then you take him and you move to Brazil. Now, we both, we both expect Ali to win, but where else in the world would it be great for a Brazilian to upset somebody than in Brazil? So um, that's how we feel about Marcos. Now with Marcos, Doc, tell us a little bit about Marcos. I know you, you, you know him pretty well. Man, this guy's, uh, I watched his last two fights, Johnny Bedford and uh, Wagner Campos. And I'm, I'm going to go to the Wagner Campos fight uh, first because this fight, it seemed like he was just getting hit over and over and over again. I'm thinking to myself, what is going on? Like, like this guy likes to block with his face. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, in the third round, yeah, Wagner, I'm not going to, I don't even to pronounce it. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Wagner because yeah. that's, that's how, that's how I remember Wagner. Wagner Prado. Prado. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, <laughs> I, I just feel like, you know, Wagner Campos, he, he gassed and, um, and Marcos capitalized on it. But, um, but man, he had Marcos hurt the whole fight and, uh, and Johnny Bedford exposed that. And so then when you put him against this, this Russian guy whose last two fights <laughs> combined, bless you, dog. Thanks. Last two fights combined don't even total a minute. Yeah, that was in Russia, but still, I mean, you just, you just got to put everything together. And, mm-hmm. and I really like this, uh, <laughs> this Ali guy. I'm just going to call him Ali. Um, and, uh, you know, inside the distance, but, but, you know, I just feel like, uh, just because it's in Brazil, it's a two. Not he's never fought outside of Russia, and uh, he's fighting a Brazilian in Brazil. So yeah. two. And, not and if that. you take a look at his most recent fights, Ali, um, you know his opponents weren't the best, and you you could see when they got into the it wasn't even an octagon, it was a ring. Um, mm-hmm. How Ali was just he looked like he did at the weigh-ins today, where he's uh, real confident. You can just tell this guy's confident, and um, and sometimes when a fighter's skills aren't necessarily the best. But they're but they're confident. They go into the octagon or the ring or whatever have you, and they go in there confident. That is big. That is a big uh, attribute to have in your favor when you're, especially when you're fighting. So um, he's going in there confident, and uh, like my dog said, Marcos using not having the striking defense, and with Ali having the the ability to connect, and he'll swing wildly, but he'll connect eventually. So um, that's that's why I got I'm going with Ali and uh, by first round knockout. And Why those not? odds, those odds are uh, Ali at minus three hundred five mm-hmm. and Marcos at plus two seventy five. Yeah, so that's that's a that's a big price to pay for non Brazilian in in uh, for non Brazilian in Brazil. Never fighting but, outside of Russia. Never yeah, fought exactly. outside of so, Russia yet. So we gotta we gotta wait and see and see what we got. Now let's flip it over here to uh, we're gonna have a, uh, a preliminary card on Fox Sports One also, and uh, we have Felipe Arantes versus Ed Milson. Ed, Eddie Milson Souza. Now, with Felipe Arantes, we've seen him in the UFC before, and uh, we know what to expect out of him. One of the things that really stands out to me is a fight that I keep telling my dog about that he had with Milton, uh, or not, not, not Milton, the one with Pepe, Pepe, with Pepe Castro. The fight he had with Pepe Castro, my God, this guy. So Pepe wanted the fight to be on the ground so he could work his excellent jiu-jitsu, and Felipe wanted no pardon it. And the amount of power that Felipe Arantes was able to generate on the ground, to me, was just incredible. I looked over at my dog. I remember we were watching at my place. looked over at my dog. I was like, wow. Like, this guy was just powerful. Just powerful, power punching. And uh, that really stands out. And Arantes has not only trained in Brazil, of course, being Brazilian, but also in New Jersey. And I think he's living now in the States. Travels back and forth. So, you know, he's thinking outside the box. He's thinking, how am I going to improve? So I really like him a lot. Um, what are the odds right now on Arantes versus Souza, dog? I want to say Arantes is like minus 190, minus 200. Um, Arantes, yeah, minus 200 yeah. or around minus 200. Mm-hmm. And uh, Souza is at around plus 185. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're wondering, why are the odds where they're at? Why is it that the odds are where they're at? I watched a lot of Souza's jungle fights. And uh, his most recent fight... <laughs> I'm watching it, and I'm thinking to myself, this is the guy who's going to fight in the UFC? 
And this, the, the, his opponent, this, this, this guy named by the nickname of Soldado, like soldier, Soldado. This guy is just continually trying to put him up against the cage. Actually, I take it back. He's putting him up against the cage the whole time, putting him on down on the ground, taking him up the cage, putting him down on the ground, beating the shit out of this, out of this, out of this Nilil Sosuza guy. And as soon as Nilil Sosuza gets a chance, which is very late in the fight, he gets up. And one thing that Souza does have going for him is he knows how to, when he's on his feet, he knows timing and distance. So he's got his striking and he knows he's a counter striker and he knows when to throw his punches. And it's impressive. Um, and as I watched more of his fights, I saw more and more and more of that. So obviously in that latest fight, it was a, just a level of competition that he faced. So that does impress me. Arantes, uh, Arantes can get uh, rocked, can get hit, can get, um, uh, you know, he, his striking defense is good, but as we saw in the Milton Vieri fight, he can, he can get rocked. <laughs> so uh, with so many other spots on the card, why push this particular fight, especially when Souza does have, and if you watch the way Souza stands, now obviously he's nowhere near Anderson Silva, but he has that kind of stance, kind of the same build. Obviously he's a smaller guy, but in proportionate to, in ratio to the size, he's got this timing and distance thing that he does kind of like uh, Anderson Silva. And I don't like that one bit, especially for Arantes. Now, Arantes, for me, almost made the cut. So he's very, very close, borderline there, because I feel like if Arantes wants to take it on the ground, he can and he can submit him. So um, I, I feel I feel good about Arantes here for, for my pick. And of course, uh, I'll give you the, the exact method and, and, uh, and round when I send you the, the file. But, uh, Doug, what do you see for this particular fight? Yeah, Doug, I agree. Arantes should win this fight, uh, probably by submission. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when there's when it, when, when it's uh, so hard to, to pick, I mean, when you can see so many clear paths to victory mm-hmm. for each guy, um, and, and it's Brazilian versus Brazilian in Brazil, um, and we've already got all these other picks, I mean, we, we don't want to just, like, like start, start, uh, start flipping a coin or anything. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, you know, I just... I, I feel like uh, after the Milton Vieira fight, uh, you know, he was winning that fight and he got caught. And, you know, against a guy like Milton Vieira, who's not the best. I mean, he's good stand-up, but he's fight mainly, IQ. He's fight mainly IQ yeah, he's mainly, like, better on the ground. To do what he did to Felipe Arantes uh, in that fight uh, during, during, I think it was, the, it was the very end of the second round after Felipe Arantes was dominating the whole round. And, uh, you know, I just, I just, and he looked, and this is before the Pepe fight. Obviously, Arante has, like, looked a lot better since then. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we can't ignore what we saw the, just the fight before that. And, um, you know, uh, you know, every, every fighter has, has their day. And every dog to, has his day. Yeah, every dog has his day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this Sousa guy, this guy, uh, uh, Kevin. Uh, uh, it's, yeah, he goes, it's, it's, he goes by Kevin. He goes by Kevin. Uh, this guy, uh, he could go out there and he could knock out uh, uh, Arantes. And, uh, and so even though my dog and I agree that Arantes should win this fight, he probably will. Mm-hmm. Uh, do not Yeah, one, bet. one thing, one thing that to, to, uh, just to add to what my dog says is, is uh, about the coin flip thing. Um, in Brazil, when it's Brazilian versus Brazilian, the underdog, the Brazilian underdog... Um, usually usually shows up and fights above the probability that we're giving him to win usually the under the brazilian underdog will look much better than he looks in previous fights when he looks on paper he will fight better um and brazilian brazilian um, fighters have a lot of pride and when they fight they they don't care if they're you know minus a thousand favorite or plus one thousand favorite or underdog, they don't care. They just go out there and they fight. And that's that's my biggest concern in this fight is that Souza goes out there and puts on the performance of a lifetime, get, does the timing and distance, and then we're sitting back like, ah, shoot, you know? But Arantes does really impress me, especially in his last fight with Pepe. So that's why I almost pulled the trigger on it. But uh, but it's just, it's, with so many other spots on the card, why push it? If you don't pu- if you want to push Arantes, I don't blame you. Um, but that's our, that's our pick for it. And then uh, moving along here, we got a, a Brazilian versus a non-Brazilian, and this one's interesting. It's Ramiro Hernandez versus Lucas Martins. Now, with Hernandez, we know he has good jiu-jitsu. His um, striking isn't very good. It's kind of sloppy, and he's not great at anything. He doesn't have a strength, but, uh, but he is pretty durable, and he has faced better opposition. With Martins, 
First thing that stands out right away is he's dropping from lightweight all the way down to atom weight, 20 pound drop. And uh, his, his striking defense is terrible. Very bad striking defense. <laughs> so it's not even like I can say he's a, he's a one dimensional striker because in order to have striking, in my opinion, you have to have this, the offensive striking and the defensive striking. This guy is an offensive striker with bad striking defense. So a very, very limited guy. And, uh, and if he can't put away Hernandez, you know, it's going to be very tough for him. And the, and the other thing is his gas tank. Lucas Martinez gas tank at 155. God knows what we're going to get 135 pounds. So this is one of the spots where I'm actually looking at the non-Brazilian and, um, and thinking to myself, my goodness, if this guy can get it to the ground or if he can just survive... He has a good chance of winning this winning this particular fight, so uh, so you know I'm I'm looking at all at all the different uh, possibilities here, and uh, I really don't like the fact that Lucas Martins, if this fight was if he wasn't dropping so much weight, I I would go ahead and say you know what um, this is a good opportunity for him to to rebound, but with that all being said, I'm gonna have to go with Ramiro Hernandez here and uh, take it for the upset. Uh, either via via late late stoppage, maybe in the third round or decision. Um, but but once again, this is a fight I have no this this one above above all. Well, this one and one more coming up that I have zero 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 interest in betting. Um, and I'm gonna sit back, watch it, see what see what uh, we can gather from from the uh, from the matchup there. But Dan, what do you have? Yeah, dog. Currently, Lucas Martinez sits at minus one thirty, while uh, Ramiro Hernandez uh, sits around plus one twenty. Mm. And uh, and yeah, dog. You know, pretty much he summed it up. You know, when I saw Lucas Martinez, uh, you know, tap the strikes against Edson Barbosa, nobody could have blamed him, other than the other than the people that you know bet uh, uh, Barbosa by 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 TKO yeah, because yeah. then obviously they lost their prop. But um, but when I saw the Jeremy Larson fight, now Jeremy Lars, our Larson is is um, mm. we think he's pretty underrated, but the amount of hits that he was able to land on Lucas Martinez, and you know that's not to say that Lucas Martinez didn't show a chin. He did. He showed a, ch- a chin, but that chin's not always gonna last. And he got hit so many times in that fight before he uh, landed that that. Um, that knockout at the early in the in the third round, and that's not to say that he didn't have um, high points early in the fight too. He did. He had there was points where Jeremy Larson was in trouble, but ultimately um, that was go- on its way to be a narrow decision, and uh, and Lucas Martinez just capitalized in the final round. Um, but he's going up against this guy who's never been finished. He's fought uh, better opposition, but. But this guy himself is also coming off of uh, you know two decision wins, one of them split, and uh, you know if he's going into this fight uh, against a Brazilian in Brazil, um, who knows what the judges are going to say? There's the the fight could be so close that it's not even worth the bet. And mm. uh, to be honest, the line looks pretty good for both guys. Um, I too am going to go with Ramiro Hernandez because he 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 just he just has better opposition. He's He's fought Pat Curran. He's fought Michael Johnson. He's beat Eric Wisely twice. And, uh, you know, Lucas Martins, who has he fought? Uh, Edson Barbosa, you know, for all of two and a half minutes. So I just feel I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going with Ramiro Hernandez on this one. And uh, it could be a decision. Uh, but I, I, I think. Uh, for all of what? For all of what, Doug? For all of two and a half minutes. <laughs> what? I'm just I'm just being real. I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, oh, that's too funny. So I'm oh gonna say I'm gonna God. say Ramiro Hernandez could yeah. be a decision, but hopefully he'll get the stop. The, the reason the reason I'm laughing so hard about this dog is because Ramiro Hernandez is, is the right pick anywhere in the world. But the fact that we're sitting here even considering uh, uh, Lucas Martins because it's in Brazil and he's Brazilian and he's yeah. Brazilian, it's just like my goodness, what what a uh, what a interesting situation, but a great betting opportunity yeah. for us to to be able to look at these matchups and say like, hey, you know what? With this yeah, one. for all we know, this fight could go down just like Dos Anjos and Dunham, where yeah. one guy wins the fight, and, and because it's in Brazil, see. they give it to the Brazilian. Yeah, so this one, uh, you know, oh man, it's just a, just a weird, what a weird situation. 20 pounds drop, and this guy looks like a skeleton out there, and he gassed at 155. Yeah. So it's like, oh, what the hell? So, um, so yeah, so... 
Yeah, that's 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 it for that one. Let's not beat that one too much up. So we have Elias Silverio versus Joas Seferino. Now with Silverio taking the fight on short notice, in this particular matchup, he's gonna want to stay standing up. He's undefeated, but his opposition, ah, it's like, well. and he takes a lot of fights to decision. Now with Zeferino, we've already seen him in the UFC. It's a second fight. He's got real good jujitsu. And he put Sapo in a bad position in, in that first round. And he is a good fighter. Now that was at 185 pounds, so it'll be interesting to see how he how his gas tank looks looks at 170. Now for this particular fight, um, I am gonna go with Seferino and I am gonna go by submission. But uh, Silverio, you know, a lot of times it's tough to get it, to give a guy his first loss. You know, they'll go in there eight and zero, and uh, it will be tough to to give him his first loss. But I I see the clear advantage for Seferino on the ground, um, so I am going to go with Seferino. And uh, once again, you know, with Silverio, um, it's just one of those fights where you got Brazilian against Brazilian. Odds are pretty even. As my dog will tell you guys here in a second. Um, so it's a, it's a risky one to, to bet. So uh, the pick will be Seferino. Dan, what do we got for the odds? And what do we got for your pick? Yeah, Doc. Uh, uh, Silverio currently sits at around minus 120, while uh, Zeferino sits uh, around plus 110. And, uh, yeah, like this is one we just kind of went back and forth again on. Uh, it's, it's just one of those fights where it's just you, you want to watch it, but you just you're, you know you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot if you bet it. Even if you win, you might feel like, oh no, here's something's something's gonna go wrong, and and or maybe something does go wrong, but then he like recovers or something. You know, it it, it could be one of those situations. And whenever you feel that way, you shouldn't bet. And uh, whenever we feel that way, we're not gonna make it a betting pick, um, especially uh, uh, on a situation like this where mm-hmm. this is one of the few uh, few fights. Uh, yeah, few fights of the night where uh, where my dog and I uh, uh, are picking against each other. I'm gonna go with Silverio because um, you know I just feel that Sapo uh, he, he he blew Zeferino's six fight win streak, and uh, you know he already fought in Brazil, so he already kind of knows how it is. And uh, I just feel like this guy's hungry, he's undefeated. Um, you know he hasn't fought anybody as good like Sapo, but at the same time, um, what I saw at the weigh in. And and uh, one guy looked like he he showed up, and the other guy was kind of like, okay, I I, you know, I, I can fight at one eighty five, I can fight at one seventy. It was kind of just, it was just kind of like I'm just happy to be here. I don't really care if I win. Now it's just my opinion based on how they look, but um, but uh, no interest in betting on this one. Really interested in watching it, see how it goes because, uh, as you said, dog, really liked what we saw in Zeferino and yeah. Sapo. Yeah, but it was it was incredible the way he gassed. I mean, it was yeah. just like an adrenaline dot. If you ever wonder what is an adrenaline dump, that was an adrenaline dump, that particular fight. It was incredible from 100 miles per hour to zero. Yeah. And uh, then we got the, the only Facebook fight of the night, the preliminary card. And God, I wish they would just put this on, uh, on Fox Sports 1, but they're putting it on, uh, on, um, on the prelim, prelim, prelim. And that's going to be Sean Spencer versus Yuri Villafort. Now with Villafort, big prospect or was a prospect now he's showing us his true colors um him and his brother uh were both at att now they're black zillions he's okay at everything uh in my opinion he has a bad fight iq and uh, and he gasses we had the uh i guess you'd call it the pleasure of watching his fight with uh <laughs> nashan burrell the rock and roller in uh in anaheim we were sitting uh, front row there uh and uh and man, this guy had the opportunity to win the fight, and every time he blew it. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the most frustrating things to 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 watch. And I don't know if this guy's just stupid, or if his corner is retarded, but or both. And if being the Black Zillions, it wouldn't you know it wouldn't surprise me if it's both. But they had a clear path to victory against the rock and roller, and they just were not implementing it. So a fighter like that, as much as I want to pick him, as much as I want to bet him in Brazil, taking on a non-Brazilian, I can't because of that. When he shows me that, I can't do it. I can't do it. And with Spencer, he should have the striking edge, and uh, Villafort gets hit, gets rocked, 
and uh, and he will have to use his uh, defensive jujitsu in this particular one because Vidya Fort should take him down and submit him. But um, it would surprise me if he wants to see wants to play a game of stand up and see who wins it on the stand up and gets himself knocked out. But I will go with Yuri. It is in Brazil. It is a Brazilian, and he does have the the uh, the edge. I don't think he will foobar uh, three times in a row now if he loses this one, and uh, I think he'll get the the, the victory here. Um, everything just points to me to put him in a in a round robin, a frisky round robin with uh, Zeferino and and uh, Zeferino. But but you know what? Uh, putting him in maybe with a couple other guys, underdogs, just for fun. But uh, why, 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 why even? I mean, I, I could see it. I, I could see it both ways. Maybe I'll put him in a like a, sh a shotgun hail mary parlay. Small, very small. Of course, not guaranteed. Of course, not expecting to win it. Just, just for fun. <laughs> Something that makes it nice and juicy. Got a long shot. Yeah, it's just a long shot for fun. You know, nothing crazy. Not nothing that's even gonna make a dent into anything. Um, but um, because it is rare to have a Brazilian at around even odds in Brazil taking on a non-Brazilian. Usually they win, but. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's it on that one. It wouldn't surprise me if Spencer pulls off the knockout of, of, of the stupid uh, game plan that they go in there with the <laughs> Uh That's it for me for this one. Dan, what do you got? Yeah, this one's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm actually picking the Brazilian in this one for one reason, one reason only, because it's in Brazil. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I totally could sh see Sean Spencer going into this fight after losing to, uh, to Sapo. Um, because he had good submission defense early in that fight, and uh, you know he just gassed, and and Sapo was just the better guy that night. Uh, but uh, but with Yuri, you know, now now keep in mind his last fight was uh, was a catchweight fight because uh, his opponent Nishan Burrell missed weight. But um, you know, other than the first, there, there's there was a part early in that fight, just the first like two or three minutes of the fight, where uh, Yuri actually uh, got uh, Nishan Burrell on the ground and had him in. I wouldn't say in in um in a submission really, but he had him in trouble to where it looked like he was gonna lock in a submission and finish the fight. And from there, um, it just seemed like it got more it got worse and worse. He they get back to the feet and he'd clinch up and then eventually uh Nishan Burrell would just take over the fight and and uh, there but but he still left opportunities for Yuri and Yuri just didn't capitalize. And um you know, that was in Anaheim, as my dog said, and we were there. And I feel like Yuri is going to be that much more motivated in Brazil. And, um, you know, Sean Spencer, uh, you know, he, he... But I feel like Sean Spencer... Uh, uh, I get their, their names mixed up. I feel like that Sean Spencer um, fought a better opponent in Sapo Natal than, um, than Yuri did in Sean Burrell. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he was finished, oh, sure. but he looked better against them, and he fought a better guy. So it would not surprise me if Sean Spencer went in there and uh, and, and won the fight. Um, with that being said, my pick is Yuri, and uh, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be realistic here. I don't think he stands a, a chance in hell at winning a decision. So I'm gonna say uh, a submission, early submission. Yeah, Yuri. Yeah. Okay. All right, Doc. So just uh, just to recap, I want to kind of take a look at something that's interesting to me, mm -hmm. at least to me, anyways. Tell me what you think about it. Uh, so. Out of these fights, non-Brazilians, um, we I am taking Benavides. So I'm taking a look here. Ali, that's two. And Ramiro, that's three. And my dog is taking the same, but he's also taking Okami. Yes. Four. So that sounds about right. That sounds, I mean, obviously, nothing is guaranteed. Yeah. But, um, shit, and I'm even looking at maybe just even taking uh, Ali and Benavides. I mean, you know, I know with, with the Lucas Martin dropping, dropping 20 pounds, that's just incredible. But uh, two or three, maybe four guys, you never know. But it's just tough for a non-Brazilian to win in Brazil. It's yeah, very difficult a, a to do. A non-Brazilian uh, parlay. There you non -Brazilian go. Non-Brazilian guys. There you go. Non-Brazilian guys. Uh, to win them. or upset. <laughs> Although I don't think Joseph Benavidez winning is an upset. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a that's a uh, or a Lee or a Lee sitting at minus three hundred. Yeah. So uh, and then a couple other little props or little things I want to share with you guys that I'm looking at that that may be interesting. Of course, these are these are just something that I mean, we're talking about. Nothing that we're gonna um, oh bet the farm on or guarantee or anything. But uh, Jorge inside the distance, Trinaldo. Inside the distance, 
and then um, Arantes inside the distance. Ones that that uh, may look may be interesting to you guys. Perhaps you know if you've done your homework or or have taken a look at certain things that might be the little push you need. And then of course Glover inside the distance. Uh, but let's not get too carried away. Now one thing I want to say about these prop bets is in relation to, in my opinion, unless it's a betting pick, in my opinion, in relation to the other bets, they should be very small. Small, yeah. unless you've got, you know, this, everything stacked in the favor of that bet, cashing out, cashing it, then uh, then go ahead and go go as big as you can on it, as much as, as they limit you to, or if you have several accounts or however you want to do it. But um, you always want to be careful with, uh, one thing I want to make clear is you always want to be careful with the prop bets because it is difficult enough to predict the winner, let alone, let alone, yeah. you know, the method. The ones that I have never liked are by submission or by knockout. Fuck that. Just <laughs> inside the distance or, or just pick up. Wins by decision. Wins by decision or just pick them straight. Yeah. Like I said, it's difficult enough to pick the winner, let alone the, the method. I mean, some are very obvious. Some are very obvious. But even the obvious ones. Even the obvious ones are like, like for example, um, people who were saying Chris Weidman's going to beat Anderson Silva, and he's going to, if he wins, he's going to submit him. He's going to win by submission. That's my, I'm putting that on that. Well, let's not get too crazy. You could just bet Chris Weidman straight up, I think like plus 180, plus 190, whatever he was around closing time, or, uh, you know, the, the prop bet on by knockout. So, it's just it just becomes a situation where um, you will lose more often than you will actually win. So it's why you got to narrow it down to some different plays. Exactly. So you that's why I like to share those. Yeah, you don't want to like like he gave you like five options that you should probably look for one, maybe two out mm-hmm. of those that you like, and uh, and then put whatever you think uh, now, you think is worth it. Mm-hmm. But but that's also just an example, and it's not guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, the Benavidez prop bet inside the distance, that one we are guaranteed. Yes, part of the, that part is of the only guaranteed picks. prop bet. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then you could take a look at the other ones. Out of the, all the other ones, I would say I favor Jorge. Jorge inside the distance. I really like that one. I was very, 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 very tempted to make that one of my guaranteed picks. I really like it a lot. It just barely missed it for me. Um, also, like Trinaldo inside the distance a lot. Um, so those are just some, some food for thought and of course I'll put that in the file and my dog will send it all out to, every, to all our clients and you guys can have, have a look at it but uh, yeah that, that sums it all up you know it, this is a fight card that like I said at first so I was looking at it I'm thinking like oh man but it is free you know it's not a pay-per-view and uh, it is in the middle of the week what a great way to, to, to you know have a Wednesday roll around taking a look at these fights you know and then um, and then we have a nice little break to get ready for uh, John Jones uh, and uh, Alexander Gustafson, which will be a really exciting one. So that does it for me, dog. Anything else to add before we wrap it all up here? Anything yeah, just, think just, just, like just that? take it, take it real easy on the props because I, I can't stress enough. Mm-hmm. The more you do, the more you're gonna regret it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And and that's not to say the the more you bet. I'm I'm saying the more uh, additional props you do. You, yeah. you it would, it'd be better to go all in on one. Then a little here, a little here, a little here, a little here. You yeah. want to go all in on one mm-hmm. or two, mm-hmm. um, you know. But but uh, but don't don't put a little here, a little here, and then five or six of them, and you hit half up. if you're lucky. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you just have to be real careful, real alert. If you just follow the five betting picks that uh, that we'll be sending out, you'll be in great shape. And uh, and like I said, we guarantee it. So uh, yeah, just uh, closing it up. Uh, Make sure where you bet it's legal so that we don't get yourself in any kind of uh, situations or any kind of trouble. We don't want to deal with that. Just make sure it's legal. And then uh, don't bet more than you can afford to lose. So budget yourself, whether it's you know this amount or that amount. Just budget yourself. That way you don't have to worry about, oh, if I lose this, I'm done for the, for the yeah. year. I'm done yeah. for, for a month or whatever. Just, just, just budget yourself. Uh, be smart. Obviously, that, that, for some guys, you know, that can be difficult to do. But you have to try your best to put things in, into uh, into in the grand scheme of your life and the grand scheme of things you have to put them in perspective and say okay this is what I can afford to lose so this is what I'm going to bet obviously we want to win but uh, just prepare yourself okay and uh, that pretty much sums it up thanks again for for, uh, for checking out our website for doing the uh, 
the paper event that we're doing now. Yes, thank you for supporting. I us. really, really, I will be. Now I'm not speaking for my dog here, <laughs> but I personally will be disappointed if at the end of Wednesday night I am not five and zero on these betting picks. I'll be even if it's four and one. I'll be pissed. I'll be upset. So that's the expectation I'm setting my, for myself for these picks. Um, I want to go five and zero on these picks. As a little, I spent a great amount of time researching these guys, watching way more jungle fights than I ever wanted to watch, and uh, you know, digging around for these names and they spell it with this and they spell it with that and Eddie Misson and Zusa and this and that. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, some of these fights, it's not as easy when these guys have never fought in the UFC and then you're yeah. researching them. So, uh, so yeah, so that sums it all up. And uh, we'll talk to you guys real soon. Hopefully, we'll talk to you guys after a 5-0 and night. All right, have a good night. Bye, guys. Make your mind up fast. Place your bets, make you a splash. Pop bottles from your earnings, get trashed. If you in Vegas, it's an automatic blast. Call your ass money bags. MMA talk say You got money on them say. If no, go win say. M M A O. MMA talk say. You got money on them say.